one of the most annoying things about eustachian tube dysfunction and tinnitus is your thoughts. A lot of you are realizing when you have this condition, you start to think of the worst of the worst. You start to imagine the worst of the worst. You think your body is going through something that it just can't get out of. And this is one of those things that can lead to a very, very uncomfortable situation. It can lead you to some situations that you're just not sure how you even got there. It takes over the mind and that's what it does. This is why this condition is so powerful because it gets into the mind and it tells you all these things that you are and what you're going through and what's going to happen. And most of the time, none of them are true. And so this is why I'm advocating for eustachian tube dysfunction and then the symptoms of tinnitus and all the crackling sounds and the muffling sounds that a lot of you are dealing with. And speaking of the crackling sounds and the muffling sounds, this is ultimately why you feel the way you feel. Why the thoughts are so array? Why are they so at the darkest of darkest place? Why are they bothering me everywhere I go? I can go to the grocery store. I can go to the mountains. I can go to an event and these thoughts still follow me. doesn't matter what kind of day you're having. It could be the greatest of the greatest days and your thoughts are going to be thinking and it's selecting the worst case scenario in anything you do. And I'm going to explain in this video why that is and what you can do about it. Now, the main reason why you start to think about these things, the thoughts are starting to take over, the negative thoughts are starting to take over your world is because of what you hear most of the time. Think about it. If someone was in your ear constantly telling you you're a failure, you can't do this right, you're not good at this, you're just terrible, you're not a good employee, you're not a good mother, you're not a good father, you're not a good sister, brother, whatever it is, you're going to reflect some of those things that are being told to you. And, and regardless if they're true or not, you're going to think about it when you leave. It's just going to be one of those things you think about. The mind can't help but to filter some things, but it's going to start to embellish some other things. Well, this is why, because the ear is constantly telling you something. It's telling you the crackling sounds. It's telling you the muffling sounds. It's telling you the swishing sounds. It's giving you the sensations of pressure in the ear, a fluid in the ear. It's in your ear. Remember, when someone's telling you something negative constantly, although you may not believe most of it, you're going to really recount what was just told to you. And this is why eustachian tube dysfunction is so powerful. It's beyond uh, powerful enough to follow you everywhere you go and tell you these things. And this is why you really start to replenish. You have to replenish the good. But once you start to replenish the good, you go, you kind of revert back to what you felt. And you're constantly feeling these things. Now, some of you may ask, how did I get through that? How did I ultimately get through the, you know, the, the fearful stage of the, of the thoughts, the negative thoughts that keep succumbing to your mental aspect, your mental world? Well, eventually I started to sharpen up. I started to realize that after it was telling me I'm going to have this problem, I'm going to have this episode. I'm going to have this breakdown. I'm going to have this anxiety attack. I'm going to have this. I'm going to have this. I'm going to have this. It's like that person that promises, promises you so many things and then they never seem to deliver. You eventually get to the point where you're numb to them telling you things that they're going to do and it ultimately doesn't happen. So you're just like, okay, well, all right. So that person that's like, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then they never deliver. You get to a point eventually where you're like, they're not going to deliver. So why? Why even think, why even give it two thoughts, basically? So you just don't think about it, right? Well, it's the same thing. After my ear, middle ear specifically, probably was telling me like, okay, this is what you're going to have. You're going to break down in this store. You're going to collapse. You're going to pass out. You're going to have a, a heart problem. You're going to have a headache. You're going to have all these issues of chronic this, chronic that. I waited for that. I was hearing it and waiting. Okay, so where is it? Then? Why is it not here? My, my brain was starting to compute all this stuff. And when it didn't deliver, it made me stronger in time, if that makes sense. When I realized all these thoughts, negative thoughts were jumping into my head, they were jumping into my head. And then after the fact, I would start. So then I start to worry. I start to do the, the second stage where I start worrying and trying to prepare. And then I realized that nothing was really happening. Yes, I felt a little of the crackling or the, the, you know, the adjustment in my jaw. I felt the the, you know, the sounds, I heard the sounds, but then nothing really happened after that. It was just like, okay, you're telling me these things. You're just telling me, I keep doing air quotes because 
a lot of what you feel and think are not true. And so when I realized that it wasn't being delivered, I started to develop confidence to realize, okay, then I'm not going to worry then. If you're not doing what my thoughts are telling me you're going to do, then I'm not going to worry about it. And I think all, a lot of you are needing to get to that point. You need to get over that mountain to that point where you're like, okay, well, if you're telling me all these things and you're not really doing it, then I'm not going to worry about it. And I think a lot of you are believing the lies that that comes behind this condition of of all the things that you think you cannot do. Like I've stated a lot in my videos before, whatever you choose not to do because of what you think you can't do, it gives substance to the condition to make it harder on you next time. So it's going to use, I say it, when it's really our inner ear. Uh, and, and, it's, and it's really connecting to the brain and the neurons and, the, and everything in there that we think and feel and become, it really connects with all of these things. But I say it because I want you to understand that this is ETD related, not you related. And when you don't do what you think you should do because you think you're limited by the condition and the condition is going to make you have this or make you feel that, you're going, you're going to give it substance. You're going to give it uh, a greater uh, resistance. You're going to give it a, a larger scale to work against you. And then when you do that over time, it becomes harder to get out of it. So what do you do? What do you do is if you have a birthday party, but you feel like crap, you go to the birthday party. Now, I do want to disclaim some things here. If you feel completely out of whack, you realize it, it Listen, there are layers to our body. We know our layers. We know our methods. We know how we we've been in this world long enough now. We know what's what's real and what's not real. And we know what is bothering us versus, versus what's actually about to happen. Like our body can detect certain layers of what's going to happen, what's not going to happen. So sometimes if you really feel you can't make it to something, don't don't push yourself. That's what I just want to say. But if you're like I was where you're like teeter totting and you kind of like, yeah, I think I can do it, but mm, maybe I should, maybe I'm not going to do it because I don't feel like testing the waters today. Well, if you're in that phase, it, you, you ultimately should go, you, whatever it is, you should go birthday party, wedding, um, the movies with some friends to the park with your dog, whatever it is, that's going to, whatever is making you not want to do it, do it anyways. Seriously, do it anyways. Just do it because you're not going to be much better off being at home. And that's why this condition is so powerful, because it makes you feel like you're safer at home, uh, away from people than you are in front of people and at an event. And that's what I really had to get myself over that thought process, because, again, that that negative thought process will make you think that being by yourself and being alone in your house because you, you feel like you're safe from the judgment, you're safe from the worry, you're close to you're close to your medication, you're close to uh, whatever place that you have in your home that makes you feel, uh, makes you think you're safer there. Um, you're ultimately not any more safer in your home than you are if you went to the park or you went to the beach or you went to the mountains or you went to the lake. You're going to develop this, you're going to give this condition muscle tissue to be stronger on you next time and harder on you next time. And that's why I want this video and all of you to watch this video to realize that you're going to give substance to something that doesn't need it. You need the substance. You need the strength. You need the ability to, to combat this overwhelmingly exhausting test. And I think a lot of you are in the stage where you're not challenging yourself enough when you truly have this condition. Now, of course, you want to always be in touch with your medical professionals, uh, whoever's handling your care. You want to make sure to get your, your sign offs on your labs, make sure your dental is good, make sure you are doing all the things you know you should do, regardless if you have the condition or not. But once you've gotten that sign off, like I did, I got all my, my labs back, I got everything back, and I was still feeling like garbage. I knew it was just ETD bothering me, which ultimately it was because see, now I'm doing great. Uh, and I don't have any of the ETD symptoms at all anymore. And so I want all, and I have moments where when I'm under intense levels of stress, sometimes I can feel my ears starting to get a little, uh, it starts to get a little bit uh, less open. So my, you know, but I know how to practice. I know how I've been through this before. I know how to control my mind better. I know how to uh, loosen up my ears. I know how to 
and massage them back into place. So then it ultimately just goes away after that. But this takes time. This takes mental training. Uh, and it's and it's crazy to say something like this takes mental training, really. And it's just one of the things you really have to understand that once you get beyond your analytical mind and you get into you tap into an area of uh, not accepting what you feel currently and you g- get into the future state where you feel like oh, I'm going to be all right. When you get into that level where you feel confident that you're not going to stay where you are and this is not such a big deal and you really, truly live that in that area and that zone and, and you feel whatever you feel is going to be second or third uh a level of importance because of how you have managed to take etd and put it in a back burner and, and tonight is the same thing tonight is never truly i should say tonight doesn't just vanish and go away what it does is it's minimized heavily to the point where you don't even acknowledge it the brain doesn't even aware it's not even aware it's there it doesn't even think about it doesn't even care if it's there and then those are the things that you have to do why does tonight go away that way why does tonight uh stop because you stop hyper focusing on it. I mean, it's the same with ETD. You stop hyper focusing about it. Anytime you feel a thought, you, you feel a negative thought coming on, you, you don't let it take over your day. You don't let it just completely just control your every move for that moment. If you want to go outside and hang out with friends, but you feel ETD stuff, uh, you go outside and hang out with your friends. You don't let ETD pull you back into the realm where it wants you to be. Because the, the, the more you let it pull you into a direction, it's going to start controlling you and, and moving you wherever you want, wherever it wants you to go. So it's all about controlling the thoughts. It's about realizing that they're not holding up to their promises. It, it promised that you were going to collapse. It promised that you were going to have issues and it didn't deliver. Once you realize it didn't deliver and you realize that's what it is, it's, it's that family member that keeps telling you they're going to come and visit you and they never do. It's the same thing with ETD. Get into a point where you hear it, but it doesn't phase you, doesn't affect you on a on a mental level, emotional level. And you're just like, yeah, if you show up, great. But I'm not worried if you don't get to that point. All of you will be much better off. You'll feel better and you'll actually achieve better. And eventually it becomes a non-existent entity in your life. So I hope this video was very helpful for you. If it was, please take time to subscribe to the channel. I'll try to bring content as often as possible. But in the meantime, I'm going to step out of the jail on the studio. I'll leave you in good hands with this video. Like anything else, folks, we're here to simply go back to the basics. Take care, everybody, and I'll see you in the next video.